We're here today in the studio of Kevin Cole, and I'm interviewing him on his upcoming show, Where Do We Go From Here? The show includes a multitude of different pieces, ranging from tondos to cutouts to large pieces, relief pieces on walls, and it's all about the vote and how the vote has been taken away from people of color. It's a continuation of a journey that Kevin's been on for over 30 years. But in this particular show, he brings in some new elements, which we really want to understand and get more information about. Where do we go from here? By Kevin Cole. So Kevin, what inspired you to create the show that you've created for Mocha? Mm, I was reading a book by uh, Dr. Uh, Ron Walters, who was at Howard, Howard University, called Freedom is Not Enough. And upon reading that book, uh, I thought that was the next step for my work. And a doctor, well, Professor Carol Anderson at, at Emory University, a one vote, no vote. There were books talking about gerrymandering and talking about voting. And then you, if, if you look at the climate, today's cl climate in terms of, of the elections and reading about, you know, gerrymandering and and I noticed everything just went back to voting, how uh, black votes are suppressed. So before we get into the art, mm -hmm. why is the whole idea of gerrymandering important? Well, because the climate that we're in, and, and when you look at voting, you know, this past election with uh, what the, the election of 2016, uh, you start to you start to look at that and how it impacted the, the world, and then looking at the world, how it impacted Georgia, then it led to the insurrection, of trying to take the overtake overtaking of the government. So when you think about <clears throat> the political climate today, what do you hope viewers take away from your show? <sighs> I want them to realize, number one, that people went through a lot in order just to vote. You know, especially African Americans. When you, when you look at the, the ballot box series, uh, you know, talking to my friends, you know, as I was reading uh, One Vote, No Vote, uh, Jim Crow kept coming up, okay? The idea of Jim Crow and what is Jim Crow. Then the next thing kept coming up was, um, voting, how, and how important voting is, and why people don't want you to vote. And so I decided to ask my friends, I said, you know, ask your parents or your grandparents about poll taxes, you know. And, you know, when you talk to people, they would, they, you know, uh, they would say, well, you know, I, I had heard, I heard before that from my grandfather, that, you know, they would ask you stuff about, how many bubbles in a bar of soap? You know, how many, uh, how many black eyed peas in a bag? And I, uh, asked, I asked my friends, uh, matter of fact, it started with uh, a friend of mine, T Tony Lohot. His mother was, she heard me, he was talking to her on the phone and he said, mom, I'm making these ballot boxes for a friend of mine. So she said to him, she said, I'm from Savannah. He said, they asked me to recite the preamble for the Constitution. So then when that sparked interest, so then I visited the, the, the Legacy Museum in, in, um, <coughs> in Alabama, in, in Montgomery, and they have a room with a list of things that black folks, they would ask. How many watermelons, in the, how many seeds in a watermelon? How many jelly beans, in, how many jelly beans in a jar? So when, as I asked my friends, they would tell me, well, my grandfather said this, or they would say, well, my grandfather said that. And, and it was from mainly all around the South. And me being from the South, you know. When you heard these stories, how did you feel? <sighs> Good question. I, I was stunned. I mean, I was just stunned that you, you would have to go through that in order to just vote. I mean, I was just stunned. Who, who could have the answer to something just like that? Now, when you think about poll taxes, you think about these real spurious questions, mm -hmm. and you think about gerrymandering in 2022, what 
about it do you hope that people take away from some of the things that you do in your show, your, your place in the show? I hope they would look up Jerry Manning first. First, that's the first thing. I would have to see what does that mean? How does that affect your district where you vote? How that's going to affect you? Because we, you know, legislation changed things, and that comes through voting. When you look at the, the, the last election, how Georgia became a major part of, of the White House and the, the Biden administration and what they're trying to do. So, did you discover anything while you were creating this show? I discovered, <laughs> to, I discovered a lot about history and that what took place 20 years ago, how it affects now. Example, when you look at President, former President Trump appointing the Supreme Court to people, they're on there for life. And judges here appointed in, this, in the Southeast, they're on there for life. I didn't think about that. That they will be, you know, once you're appointed a, a judgeship like that, you're there until you die. Which then means what? Which thing means that they can make decisions about your life, your family life, make decisions about, about your whole future and your grandkids. Three works in the show are designed to swing in the air. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about these three works. <clears throat> I, I call them, I always wanted to do a series of banners. I call them banners. When you think about banners, banners display things. They they have they they communicate things. Staying within my within my style, using the rod and the symbolism. The rod symbolized the cane that my grandfather used. Then you have the necktie shapes and the scarf shapes. And on each banner, there are court cases that deal with court cases that ha that happen in those states. Or there are various slogans, like for instance, on Georgia has on it John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which has not been passed. So I left the voting rights in contour, but John Lewis is etched in. On each one of them, there are certain things that are etched in. Then you look at a lot of the patterns and symbols I, that I use in terms of my paintings from the Kente cloth and the, uh, and the Dinka cloth. But I picked three states, which I felt were, were very, very important, okay, in terms of uh, looking at a gerrymandering. Of course, I did Georgia, because Georgia was that, that, that last state that put the two senators that made history, you know. Then I looked at Florida, where Trump spent most of his time. And looking at Florida, the, the whole idea of of racism in Florida. You got the Proud Boys based, based in Florida. So I, I looked at that and then I did North Carolina because North Carolina um, also was, was, was one of those states that was in heavy conversation. So I wanted them to, I want them to be banners that would be suspended from the ceiling with the different court cases that, that, that had happened in their, in their state. Is there any significance that they might be swinging? Yeah, Talk right. To me about that. Swing. I thought uh, when I had the initially the, the, the idea, and the way we were trying to set up, there would be lights coming up from the floor, and then we are placing them in in uh, areas where the air condition is on the on the wall. There will be uh, 18 inches from the wall, and they will have the, the potential to swing. Yeah. And the swinging means what? Or um, swinging for me is back and forth. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the conversation back and forth, Republican or Democrat, or you know, that you know, the House, the, the Democrats win the House one year, they win the Senate year, then the, then the, you know, and the idea of swinging uh, the the presidency every four years. Okay. Um that being said, you talked about the engraving, and in one of your works, you have engraved Shaw versus Reno, and then in that piece, you also have filibuster, as well as the word Rosewood. 
Talk to me about why those words, why that, what's, what's going on in that piece? That piece is about Florida. And, and if you remember, Rosewood was a prominent area for African Americans in Florida. It was just like uh, Tulsa, black, black, black Wall Street. It was a prominent area. And then in one of the ballot boxes, one of the ladies was from uh, Lake Oconee, Florida. She mentioned that whenever it came time to go register to vote, she mentioned that there would be th three things that would happen, either either three days before voting or at least at least once 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 one of those weeks. She said the first thing would happen is there would be a series of cross burnings. Okay, then the the, the next day there would be. Uh, there will be a series of uh, nooses hanging from the telephone pole on your on your way there, and the third day there will be signs that say it's best you be it's best you not be around here trying to vote. So then you think about the the, the filibuster is something that they use to prolong time. Okay, if they if they want to bring a, little, a something to say somebody doesn't want to bring. Uh, what you call it, a, a bill that that person you know they just wait it on out, whereas you know you can't get that bill passed. So both the filibuster and these different things that happen mm -hmm. were keeping people from voting. vote from voting and keeping keeping bills from being passed. Because when you look at uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, George Floyd bill had not been paid. Pass yet. The John Lewis voting right bill has not been passed. Talk to me about Shaw versus Reno. Shaw versus Reno was was one of those cases where it went up to the a state supreme court in Florida, and that was that was based on on uh, there were several counties that that they had put gerrymandering in, in it, where they were putting black officials in the same county where they were voting against each other. And so then it, it went to the court on that. Um, in several of the works, you combine soil from that state right. along with the metal shavings mm -hmm. from your etching and, and aluminum. Um, besides creating visual interest, what is this application? Why did you do that? I wanted the soil to represent when you think about, I, I call that group the Dirty South, okay? Because that's where I grew up. But I, you know, you think about Dirty South, you think about people being buried, okay? Especially black people, okay? When you look in, the, in those areas, those areas are heavily populated with black people. So I want the dirt from that soil to be a part, the dirt from that state to be a part of the peace. And I got the idea from the Legacy Museum, they have these jars of soil from people that were lynched. That's what they have there. It's these jars with the names of people on them. So with that, what do you want people to take away from these pieces? I want them to, I really want them to go and vote. That's the main thing. If they don't take anything, anything, anything else away, go vote. I've dealt with the concept of voting for the last 20 or 30 some years. I've done it in an in a, in a abstract way. And with my paintings, I thought about the idea of, the idea was for me that you see all these colors in the piece, the, you know, they're, they're done well, but then what's the underlining thing about them? When my grandfather took me to the tree, where African Americans were lynched by their neckties on the way to vote. You may see it as a pretty picture, but it's like being all dressed up, but no place to go. So you look at this, and I mean, you look at everybody and say, well, we've, we've come a long way. Yes, we have. But yet, that is so far, yet we made it only so far, and, 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 there's, and we got a lot farther to go with these laws being passed. They, they try to reverse everything back. It's trying to go backwards. An example, you see, you know, uh, former President Trump, make America great again. On, on the banner, I have make America responsible. 
You have that on there because? Because of the fact that that's what makes America need to be responsible for what they've done to, to African Americans. And you look at now in, in education, they don't want you to teach what's, what really happened in history. They don't want you to teach about slavery. You know, you, I mean, this is something that happened. And, and uh, you know, it's in situations where, where the truth needs to be told. But that's another show. <laughs> okay, okay. With that, in your largest piece, there are maps, outlines of four Georgia counties. Counties, right. Uh -huh. Tell me this. A, what drove you to make the piece? What are the four counties? What, 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 what are you trying to say in, in this piece? When... I received the, the, the working project grant, okay? I had, I sit down with a friend of mine and we wrote the idea of let's go, to, let's take it this, this far. And I started looking at gerrymandering. What counties, would, where you know that gerrymandering was really taking place? It was Floyd, Forsyth, Glen, and Lumpkin County. So then I started looking at, you know, the map, it, it, you know, you, you can see it on the map where it's taking place. So I'm looking at that. So I wanted to do something. I wanted to make a big piece and call it all, all tied up in politics, the cover up. Because <laughs> it's covering up, it's covering up of, of, of gerrymandering. Now all of a sudden, you never heard this much about gerrymandering until the last, I would say, 10 years. Now all of a sudden, gerrymandering, and, and, the, and it's, it is a big battle in Ohio, very much so. You got Ohio, you have, you have Michigan, you have uh, Wisconsin, but it, it is, I mean, it's, it's real big in, in those states. They're going at, there are court cases right now dealing with that, what they should be doing. And the name of that piece is? All Type in Politics, The Cover Up. Behind you are three round pieces. Right. Talk to me about these three pieces. Well, these are intaglios. In other words, it's a printing process. Whereas I work with Raven Edition, and I would draw on the plate. Then once I drew on the plate, I would ship it to them. They would print them. Then I would come back and, and go between each state. And the idea was, I call it living between the black and white lines. Because that's, that's what gerrymandering actually is. Help me understand that. Okay, when you look at the, at the black and white lines, sometimes the, the lines are, are, are like outside. Then you got, and you got inside, you, you have, have, have the white lines. I wanted the tondo shape at the circle, because when you look at the circle, that's, it's, it's, it's like a target. And, and inside the target, there's, there is that state. You got the mark making a lot of the symbolism that I normally use, and patterns are drawn, drawn in between. Good stuff. Now, in the pieces where you use the clay and the shavings, mm -hmm. wait, how many pieces are those? Uh, it's, it's, it's Southern states. It's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There, there are seven. Eight, seven. eight, 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 eight. And it's because, does it represent all the southern states or? Most of the southern states. I picked out the southern states that where the gerrymandering was more prevalent. Okay. Okay. Is there one of these states or one something you read that stands out beyond any of the other states? I would say Mississippi. Talk to me. It's still the poorest state, but yet I would say the African-American uh, population is almost 50-50, not 50-50. It's close, it's close to it, but it's very, very poor. And I didn't realize that some of the things, uh, how really um, dated it is. I mean, in terms of uh, black representation, you know, there, I, don't think, I don't think it's one I, I didn't read, I know there were several elections that were supposed to happen where they were trying to get a black senator. That didn't happen. Why do you think that is? <sighs> Gerrymandering. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you were dealing with, you've been dealing with a lot of heavy stuff your whole life. Right. 
you've been dealing with the idea that black men were lynched on their way to vote. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with voting and voting rights acts and mm -hmm. now gerrymandering mm -hmm. and states and counties that mm -hmm. have perpetrated basically crimes against mm -hmm. people of color as it relates to denying them their right to vote. Right. What's been, or what's the hardest thing that you've had to grapple with emotionally as you've worked through all of this? Well, I guess the hardest thing to grasp, I had to grasp with was listening to elderly people tell their experience in trying to vote. Talk to me. Uh, you know, asking them their, asking them uh, what they went through. And then there were some that didn't, didn't want me to mention their name. They didn't want to talk about it. But yet, when, what, they didn't want to put it in writing. But yet, when you talk to them on the phone, they talked about a lot of stuff. Like one guy said, uh, another friend of his, they never did find him. He left to go vote, he never came back. You know, you, know, you listen to, wow, you know. And then they would talk about, not only that, they would talk about their experience just being, being a black man. Then at the same time, grasping um, young boys being killed by the police. All this stuff, you look at the news, you, sometimes you look at the news, you, you hear about this, you, 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 know, you, you hear about that. And, and, and you know, it's just, it just the whole, whole thing of how do we make these changes? But the hardest thing, I guess, was listening to these elderly people talk about their experience and then going to the lynching museum and reading. And they got these things that are acted out about what happened. How did you feel then? Terrible. <laughs> I mean, just to me, it was like, it was terrible. Like, you know, you know how, how did we survive all this? I know it's our faith, but how do you survive all, all this? How do, you tell your, how do you tell your kids, this is why it's so important to vote? How do you tell, how do you tell you know, young people that this is, this, is, this is what you should be doing? This is what people did in order for you to be here. So I'm going to throw out some words. You tell me if you felt any of these mm -hmm. emotions as you went through this. And you can talk about them either mm -hmm. when I mention them or mm -hmm. you can talk about them after I mention them. Mm -hmm. First one is anger. Did you feel anger? A lot of anger. Disillusionment. Uh, yeah. Oh, disillusionment. <laughs> Very. Um, sadness. Sadness. Disappointment. And disappointment. Yes. Talk to me about those four emotions. <laughs> when you look at um, when you look at sadness, you know you hear people still say, "My vote don't count." My vote don't count. You look at this, uh, you look at uh, this, I mean, just the idea of this really happened. I mean, this really happened? Are you serious? How many bubbles in a bar of soap? I mean, how, how many black eyed peas in a bag? How many bullets on the table? How many matches? How many buttons? You know, how many gumballs in a, in a gumball, how many gumballs in a gumball machine? So you mentioned anger. What did you do with that anger? I put the anger in the work, etching into the into this aluminum. You know, you etching. You know, it's like you know, yeah. There, you etching into aluminum. You know, sometimes getting deeper. You know, scratching into it, scratching into it. That's what. That's what. The thing that I have, and I tell artists that we got, we got a way to put that stuff into something. Uh, and, and I put it into into my work. I've always done that. And you mentioned people saying their vote doesn't count. Right. How do you feel when people say that? Very disappointed, sad. Disappointed and sad because? Because if it didn't count, they wouldn't want you to vote. But they make it gerrymandering, so even if you vote, it don't count, right? In, in some cases, it doesn't. It, it may, may not, but, but, but you tried. You, you did what you were supposed to do. That's what my parents said. You, you did your job. Two years ago, or a few years ago, mm -hmm. You were experimenting with mapping. Mapping. And it seems this mapping led you to some other things which 
now you kind of include it in, 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 in right. what you're doing now. Right. Talk to me about that a little bit. The mapping started in, with Hurricane Katrina. Now, I always say there, there are three events that changed our lives forever. September 11, Hurricane Katrina, and now the coronavirus, okay? Um, I started to look at, I had a lot of frat brothers who were from, from New Orleans, and I was watching TV one night, and they were, showing, they were mapping the path of the storm. So I said, wow, that would be neat if I did a series of works based on New Orleans sound, and I used the process of mapping. I took the counties, the counties and the areas of New Orleans, the Ninth Ward, where everything was affected. I started looking on the map of these shapes. They came at these very, very, very interesting shapes. So then I started inserting the neckties and scarf shapes in those. And at that time, I was, I was working on wood as well. The reason every medium has to do with an event that have happened in my life. I use wood because when you think about that, the African American being lynched by the neckties on a tree, I'm bending wood. September 11th, I was supposed to be in New York and I didn't go. Bill Stevens sent me a picture of a little boy holding a piece of tar paper and aluminum. I started working on it. But then the planes I made of what? Metal. I started working on copper. I was looking at TV. It was Peter Jennings that did a special on September 11th. He said that there were over a thousand and one remains left. And it, it would cost the government pennies to find out who these people were. So I started working on copper. And now the mapping in gerrymandering, help me understand. The mapping, that. mapping, now. the states, around the states. It's still mapping, but the only thing, only different is I'm etching into it more. I'm drawing, I'm using the scarf shapes, scarf shapes and the necktie shapes as a motif that you often find in, in my work. You know, that, and that, that's the process of mapping, you know, looking at, the, at these states, it's, it's, still, it's still mapping. There's a lot to take in mm. with your show and all of the different mm. pieces that you have and all of the different um, things that are being expressed or communicated mm. by them. Are you worried at all that it might be overwhelming? A little bit. But if you notice, I kind of kept it simple. I stay, I stay within uh, a color range, which really is like black and white. And that color range have to do with, we've gone through this before, okay? This started in black and white. And now it's going back to black and white with just a little color, just a little color. With just a little color. <laughs> just, just, just a little color. Okay, all right. Um, that's funny. Um, that being said, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, they leave your show. Mm -hmm. What do you want the discussion to be about? Why should I vote? Why, this is why I should vote. I can make changes. This is what my ancestors went through or this is what our ancestors both black and white okay this is what it's only fair that everybody have the opportunity to make changes in their life and voting is that one thing we all have that one thing that makes us all even along with death that being said mm -hmm. getting back to Jeremy mm -hmm. we can all vote but what I also hear you saying is all votes don't count equally. No, they don't. Talk to me a little bit. When you look at uh, Dr. Well, Carol Anderson's book, is, is no vote, one vote, how the, the Democratic, well, how, how, the, how, how democracy is, is being described. When we look at a lot of it is based on, on the census when you look at a jury man, okay? Okay, being counted, okay? That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a major part of it. So if we turn around and we look at the idea of what gerrymandering is doing, 
we got getting we're well, making getting a legislation change where gerrymandering is is not is not a major part. Bringing in laws to change gerrymandering. That's the only way it's going to change. I mean, that, that, I mean that, that's the only way. So then it goes right back to what? Voting. 